hope you guys get why I'm so excited about this. I mean, ah, it's just, I'm going crazy with the potential for this site because look at it. Like, can you even count? Could you possibly even count how many different Google snippets this one post could win? What's up everybody? Today we are on the road to 1 million page views on backfire.tv. I'm finding some really cool things that I'm excited to share with you about search analysis, about resource posts, and kind of the progress and kind of seeing how realistic this goal can, can really be. So let's dive in looking at search analysis. So many of you know that we changed our search analysis process pretty substantially in April, but now that people are putting their ideas for a blog post through a much more rigorous method of validating those ideas to make sure that they're, they're good, I'm seeing a lot of people complaining and saying, I just can't find anything to write anymore. And so I do want to share, share with you how our search analysis has gone. So we have 27% high priority posts and you can see all the, all the rest here. That's kind of the breakdown that I've found in the firearms industry. So here's our search analysis. We have 44 published posts right now. These are ones that are left to right. And you can see which ones are high priority, medium priority, low priority, etc. Let me show you an example of a high priority post. For example, we're going to take 6.5 Creedmoor, which is a different rifle cartridge, for, and as an autocomplete, we see some of those animals. And so let's just take bear, for example. Now, if we use the search analysis process, you'll see that there is a partial result, there is some traffic here, substantial traffic for this. And so we're feeling good about the amount of people that search this, but the question is how competitive is it? So the first article is from Field and Stream, obviously a well-known publication, but it's not specific to the 6.5 Creedmoor. Then we see a forum, another, uh, it's about the topic, but not specific to 6.5 Creedmoor. This one's specific to 6.5 Creedmoor, but not necessarily even uh, about bear, uh, another forum, etc. And so this is pretty classic low competition. We're just not finding articles that are quite on point to what we had. And even if they had been on point, I want to see kind of what the quality of those posts is going to be. So that's what you're looking for. That's the recipe for a winning article. Okay, now the exciting part. I wanted to show you that introductory portion first because it has to be super clear what the bread and butter is, what the fundamental is, what the thing is that's going to drive the result, and then what's the experimentation here. And what I'm about to show you is more the experimentation phase. Most of you who are starting a blog, you want to do that process that I just exactly showed you over and over and over and over again. I mean, think about it this way. If we find a post that's a high priority post, one like that, that has, you know, 5,000 page views or 5,000 potential searches per month, traffic that you could be bringing in, that much traffic from one article. If we have that kind of potential and that low of competition and you write a post every day, man, you're going to be unstoppable, unstoppable. The problem is most people get bored of search analysis and so you quit. And so you take one or two high priority ideas and like mostly low priority, some medium priority posts that just don't have as good of a recipe for success. They either don't have the high traffic or they have too much competition and you're just fighting an uphill battle the whole history of your site's existence. You know, it takes four hours to write a blog post. And so if you can take an extra 15 minutes to find the right post to write, you're going to have just way more success. But now we got to get into the fun stuff. So we need a new plugin. The new plugin is called Ninja Tables Pro. I do have an affiliate link in the description or go to incomeschool.com slash tables. Uh, and I want to show you some cool things, things that it has done to help me produce content quickly and to produce a really, really cool type of content that Google is dying for us content to creators to produce more of. Let's take a look. 
Okay, so I've showed, whoa, you guys are really close. <laughs> okay, so I've showed you before this sheet, uh, and I mentioned in the last video where I introduced this goal, this road to one million page views, I talked about this sheet. So these are all of the different potential rifle cartridges, we'll say the different bullet sizes. Um, these are a ton of different ones, 82 of them. And then I went and just did research on so many different numbers, every, you know, how fast it shoots, how much power it has, the when the cartridge was developed, the dimensions of the cartridge, just everything you could want to know in terms of the numbers about each and every cartridge. And then I would love to put this data in a table, but if I put it in a table in a blog post, what happens if later I see, ooh, this number was wrong? Well, it may have been referenced in 20 different blog posts if we're talking about a popular cartridge. So that's not a good situation at all. So instead, I'm using this plugin. And there are other options. I thought this one was pretty reasonably priced and does exactly what I want. So essentially what it does is this plugin will go to your Google Sheet, where you keep all your data still in just one Google Sheet, and every whatever five minutes, one hour, whatever you set the interval to, it will just go check the database, see if there were any changes, and sync it with all of the blog posts that I have that reference that information. I have already needed to change things like 10 or 15 times where I had some of the data wrong or something, and bam, it's just right back, updates all of those blog posts, so cool. Before I show you how it works, I've got to talk about why this is relevant to all of you guys. So let's say you have a, a website on buying a home. Well, could you go through all of the different mortgage lenders and make a similar kind of database of everything that they could possibly want to know about it? Of course you could. Let's say on Camper Report, the site we had, could you do the same thing about different RV brands uh, and different models of RVs? If you have a site about um, football, could you do it on stats of different players? Like, I, it's hard to think of a niche that this kind of technique wouldn't apply to. And so now when I want to create something, I'll go to Ninja Tables Pro, I'll create uh, the table, I'm just going to add a table, and then I'm going here, I publish this to the web and grab my link, I go to connect to Google Sheets, I have my link, and now it has all of the different columns right here that I can click on for whichever ones I want to include in the post. So let me show you what it's gonna look like on the user end now. So now I go to backfire.tv, we'll just take an example. This is the maximum effective range. Let's say you're hunting with one of these, how far could you effectively shoot it? And we've done cool calculations, like if I shoot it here, at what distance is the bullet going to drop slower than 1,900 feet per second? It's so cool! On all of them, I've got it! Uh, how many foot-pounds of energy, uh, everything, for all these cartridges. For my audience, they're going to be super excited about this. Um, and then I've just written some things just explaining basically what the data is. I kind of feel like I need enough words on the page to just explain what this resource is. The danger in doing this in using a plugin for tables is now you have to have that plugin forever because otherwise you're going to break all those former posts. And so I really looked at the options out there for tables plugins with a skeptical eye before going to one because if I just use Gutenberg, then I don't have to worry about this. If I just use the WordPress table maker and I don't use a plugin for this, it's way better. I'm, I would always prefer to do that. But here where we're syncing with Google Sheets and a massive amount of data, I just didn't really have much of another option. I hope you guys get why I'm so excited about this. I mean, ah, it's just, I'm going crazy with the potential for this site because look at it. Like, can you even count? Could you possibly even count how many different Google snippets this one post could win? It's crazy how many posts this could be. So here is one snippet for just, you know, what is recoil, right? Somebody who's new and learning this. Then every single cartridge you could possibly want to look up, bang, here's data, right? And then I took um, 
some of the most common cartridges and I wrote out a snippet for each one. It's just answer target, answer target, answer target, answer target, answer target. <laughs> Look at this. So we'll take an example. The 6.5 Creedmoor produces 8.89 foot-pounds of energy and, and at a recoil velocity of 8.83 feet per second in an average weight rifle. It is considered to have very mild recoil, which many youth shooters and all adult shooters can generally shoot without any flinch or pain. Bam! I'm targeting a specific answer target for 6.5 Creedmoor rifle recoil. There we go. And so this is what we're trying to beat. And I think my answer target's better. I frankly don't know how this is going to perform. I haven't produced this. I'm calling kind of a resource post. I haven't produced these before. I've certainly had some very data heavy posts, but not to this extent. And so that's why I kind of wanted to present in this video, first, the fundamentals, search analysis, writing blog posts, do that. But I also want to show you the cool new stuff that I'm experimenting with, and that's this. And I'm really excited for what it could be. So here's our traffic for the first 30, well, 31 days. The, the one day was right before that, uh, since we announced this project. Now, remember, this is getting traffic from our YouTube audience. And so that's how we have 22,000 page views in the first month is we've pushed it from our YouTube audience to come to check out the new site. Then right here is where uh, the YouTube video was released where I talked about it on this channel. We got a little spike, but then obviously it's just gonna die off uh, later. So it's nice that we have a kickstart of 22,000, but now it's like, uh, I mean, yeah, just 977,000 page views to go uh, that we just, the only way we're going to get that is organic traffic because we're already pushing it on the YouTube channel. So 977 to go. We have published 44 posts in the first 30 days, which I am happy about that. That's good progress, especially because I wrote 16 of those posts myself. But here's the problem. 44 posts minus 30, divided by 30 days that's only 1.46 posts per day. And like I said in our last video, I need to be doing about 1.72 posts per day. And I wanna front load that by producing more, more quickly at the beginning so we get the result. So I'm actually just slightly behind in producing the content and I need to get our writing team moving more quickly. That's my goal for the next 30 days. Thank you for joining me on the road to 1 million. When you're ready to begin your own, you know where to go, incomeschool.com. Become a member. You'll see our full process, how we do everything, so that you can earn an, an income for your family too. Bye.